Good morning, dear friends in Christ, on this fifth Sunday after Pentecost, June 27th. This morning we turn our attention to Mark's Gospel in chapter 5, and we see, uh, we follow Jesus as we see two healing accounts intertwine with one another. In one account we find a young girl, 12 years old, facing death. And in the other, a woman who has been suffering for 12 years with a hemorrhage of blood. And on the way to heal the young girl, the woman reaches out to be healed by Jesus' cloak. And Jesus stops and addresses her, saying, your faith has saved you. But then we find out that this brief delay allowed the child to die before Jesus could arrive. But Jesus turns to her father, saying, do not fear, only believe. These texts remind us that everything is in God's good timing and that there's nothing that our Lord cannot overcome. It reminds us not to lose heart and to have faith in the power of God, even when it seems hopeless. And so that's the focus of our worship this morning. If you'd like to follow along with our service, you may do so by turning to page 260 for the service of prayer and preaching. And let us begin. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. With joy will you draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Proclaim that his name is exalted. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitants of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. The Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday after Pentecost is from Lamentations chapter 3. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. Let him sit alone in silence when it is laid on him. Let him put his mouth in the dust. There may yet be hope. Let him give his cheek to the one who strikes, and let him be filled with insults. For the Lord will not cast off forever, but though he cause grief, he will have compassion, according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve the children of men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistles from 2 Corinthians chapter 8. We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means of their own free will, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. And this not as we expected, But they gave themselves first to the Lord, and then by the will of God to us. Accordingly, we urge Titus that as he had started, so he should complete among you this act of grace. 
But as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all earnestness, and in our love for you, see that you excel in this act of grace also. I say this not as a command, but to prove by the earnestness of others that your love also is genuine. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. I do not mean that others should be eased and you burdened, but that as a matter of fairness, your abundance at the present time should supply their need, so that their abundance may supply your need, that there may be fairness. As it is written, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And dear friends, the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fifth chapter. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. And he went with him, and a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had a, had a discharge of blood for twelve years, and who had suffered much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus, and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, If I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace, and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they had said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. They came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him, and went in where the child was. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kumi, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking, for she was twelve years of age. And they were immediately overcome with amazement. And he strictly charged them that no one should know this, and told them to give her something to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. And dear friends, we confess our one Christian faith, starting with the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant, or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Once again this morning, we turn to Mark's Gospel, and in our text this morning, we begin with Jesus being approached by one of the rulers of the synagogue, a man by the name of Jairus, who fell at Jesus' feet, and he begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. And Jesus went with him. But the story is interrupted by another. As Jesus is walking, there's a great crowd following him and surrounding him. And in this crowd was a woman who had had a discharge of blood for 12 years. She had suffered under many physicians. She had spent all she had and was still no better. In fact, she had only grown worse. She had heard the reports of Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. And she had said to herself, if I touch even just his garment... I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out of him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? The disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? Everyone is touching you, Jesus. But Jesus looked around to see who had done it. And the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, and fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. And Jesus says to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Or more accurately, your faith has saved you. Go in peace, and be healed of your disease. And while Jesus was still speaking to this woman, someone came saying, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus turned to Jairus and said, Do not fear. Only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John. As they came into the house, Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And he said to them, Why are you making such a commotion? And weeping. The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. And he put them outside and took the father and mother and those who were with him and went in to where the child was. And taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kumi, which means little girl, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking, for she was 12 years old. And they were overcome with amazement, and he strictly charged them that no one should know this. And he told them to give her something to eat. These are two incredible accounts, so intermingled that they can't really be separated. And it's an event that's important enough to be mentioned in each synoptic gospel. Both Matthew and Luke record this for us as well, but Mark gives us the most details. We cannot divide the two. Because without one, the other would not have happened the way it did. For example, if Jairus had not approached Jesus, perhaps he would never have encountered the woman with the discharge of blood. And if the woman had not been there, delaying Jesus and healing the young girl, 
perhaps we would never have witnessed Jesus' power over death in that instance. And we would have been robbed of an amazing passage that demonstrates the power of faith in Jesus. This passage is so unique compared to many others. First off, two women. A 12-year-old girl and a woman suffering 12 years with a discharge of blood, both at the end of their ropes, are healed and saved on the same day. And in both accounts, there's this emphasis on faith coming from the mouth of our Lord. It seems like perhaps God had a hand in all this. And it isn't as random as we might believe. Maybe God is trying to tell us something here about our own lives. Like Jairus, perhaps we feel desperation as we come to the Lord. Faces downcast, falling on our knees, pleading with God to save someone we love from death. Or perhaps you've been praying for a long time for this person and you worry like Jairus that any delay might end in catastrophe. Catastrophe. Or perhaps like the woman with the discharge of blood in our text, you come to Jesus only when you find yourself out of options. You have sought after all the physicians of the world, false idols that give us temporary pleasure or peace. Just talk to any addict and they'll tell you that the biggest reason that they started using drugs was to escape the reality of their suffering. They want to feel good and to stop feeling bad. Or perhaps they didn't feel like they fit in with the rest of the crowd, and so they began using, to make, began using to make that feeling disappear, as is common among many younger teens. This woman probably understood that to some degree, as a discharge of blood would have made her unclean in Jewish society. Thus she too would have been an outcast to some degree, which is perhaps why she's so desperate to find a cure. Back to our world. People don't just turn to drugs and alcohol. Some also turn to wealth and power, pouring every ounce of their energy into securing those things so that they can feel better about themselves and their lives. Even when it costs them time with their families. Or even worse, keeps them from worshiping their creator. But in the end, those false physicians leave us destitute and broken, unable to heal the real issue. Sin is a discharge, a discharge that makes us unclean, and there's no earthly means by which our sins can be healed. And sin leads to death. And here we find ourselves in the same situation as the little girl in our text. Death comes for us all, young and old alike. It strikes everyone without prejudice. And those who have no faith weep and wail, causing a commotion. But for us who have faith in Christ, there is hope. This text could have so easily ended in tragedy. Jairus could have lost his daughter to death. The woman could have died from her discharge of blood. But God had other intentions. Instead, God used these terrible situations to teach those suffering as well as us who study his word, that faith in him can overcome anything. In the case of the woman with the discharge, in faith, she reached out simply to touch Jesus' garment. And in an instant, she was healed. It was not because the garment held special power or that her faith was stronger than others. But as Jesus says, because she placed her faith in him and his power, Jesus tells us, or tells her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Now, peace is something that this woman has been missing for quite some time. And now, because of Christ, peace is hers as well as the promise of salvation. And Jesus calls her daughter, communicating to her that she is a child of God. Now, imagine the relief that this woman felt. Now, now, what if I were to tell you that the same is true for your life? Your faith in Christ, a gift given through the word of God, brings peace for you. Through Christ, your sins are forgiven. 
The discharge of wickedness that no other physician on earth could treat is completely healed by the precious blood of Christ shed on the cross. Christ now clothes us in the garment of his righteousness, and we are now saved by faith in him. If you want to feel better about your life, Stop turning to the, to the physicians of this world. Only Christ can give you the eternal peace that you truly desire. And what about Jairus and his daughter? Imagine the broken heart of Jairus as he hears from the messengers that he should stop bothering Jesus because his daughter is already dead. The world does the same thing to us. It tells us to give up hope that death is final and that there's nothing more that can be done. Stop praying. Stop bothering God. The world brings us no comfort. Instead, it weeps and wails, causing a commotion like those in the house because it does not believe in the promises of God. The world mocks the Christian church laughing as it confesses what Christ tells us here, that death is nothing more than sleep to our God. Jesus brings comfort to Jairus, saying, Do not fear. Only believe. Jesus speaks these words to you as well. Do not fear. Only believe. Why? Because death is not the end for our Lord. Jesus casts the unbelievers from the house and he brings in the little girl's parents to show them his power over death. And Jesus speaks gently saying, Talitha kumi, Aramaic for little girl, I say to you, arise. Jesus rouses her from death as a loving parent rouses their child from sleep. And he instructs them to tell no one because there is an even greater miracle that will take place when he himself undergoes death and resurrection. Death for the Christian is temporary. It's like a brief slumber from which our Lord awakens us on the last day. And Jesus proves that to us by rising from death on the third day. In John chapter 11, at the death of Lazarus, Jesus tells us plainly, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Jesus then asks Martha, Do you believe this? And Jesus asks you as well. What these two accounts teach us is that God is always in control. Even when things seem desperate, even when they don't go our way, God has already secured for us the victory through His Son, Jesus Christ. God is showing us that faith in Jesus, in His power, in His death and resurrection for the forgiveness of sins, for life and for salvation, can overcome all the tragedies of this world. Faith in Christ is a sure thing. Something that we can turn to even when everything else around us leaves us feeling hopeless. Christ has the power to heal. Even if our disease and sickness aren't healed in this life, we know that in the next they will be gone entirely. Christ has power over death. We know that even if death strikes us, it's not forever. God will raise us from death as a loving father wakes his child from sleep. Let Jesus' encouragement to these individuals in our gospel also give you encouragement. Child, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. And again, do not fear, only believe. May the Lord fill us with faith to withstand the doubts and fears that plague us all the days of our lives clinging to his grace through Jesus Christ, which grants both healing and life to all people. In Jesus' name, amen.
And dear friends, if you would like to submit your tithes and offerings to the church, you may do so by mailing them to Emmanuel Lutheran Church at P.O. Box 35, Eagle Bend, Minnesota. Or you can mail it to St. Matthew's Lutheran Church, P.O. Box 425 in Clarissa, Minnesota. Or you can simply go online to eaglevalleylcms.org, click on our donation page, and if you scroll down about halfway, you'll see an online giving option with a button for either church. And you can set up a one-time gift or a recurring gift or a monthly gift, weekly gift, however often you would like to give. Um, and that is totally up to you. And once again, we pray that the Lord would continue to bless each and every one of you and provide you with what you need for this daily life. Dear friends, let us go to our Lord in prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the gift of divine peace and a pardon with all our heart, with all our mind. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this nation, for our cities and communities and for the common welfare of us all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphan, and for all those in prison. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for our brothers and sisters in the care centers, for those who have requested our prayers, for Barb Rowe as she recovers from recent medical issues, for Kathy Drevel recovering from foot surgery, for Earl Lutke, for Helen Keane, for Lisa Meyerding, for Kay Nelson, and for Stacy Warren. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Heavenly Father, during his earthly ministry, your son Jesus healed the sick and raised the dead. By the healing medicine of your word and sacraments, pour into our hearts such love toward you, that we may live eternally. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we pray together Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia! Alleluia! Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Raised from the dead, he will never die again. Death has no more dominion over him. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia! Alleluia! Dying, Christ dies to sin once for all. Living, he lives to God. Count yourselves as dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia. Alleluia. Dear friends, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. And dear friends, before we depart this morning, just a few announcements. Our next special service for our high-risk members will be July 4th at 12 o'clock here at Emmanuel. Uh, once again, we do ask that you wear masks for the service, and communion is also provided as well. Uh, LWML will be resuming their, their monthly meetings. They will be meeting on July 8th at 1 o'clock over at the Bend Cafe. Quilting for the month of July will be at St. Matthew's, July 22nd and 23rd from 9 to 3. 
Uh, once again, all are welcome to join. You don't have to know how to quilt to participate. They need help with all sorts of tasks. Uh, there will also be another quilt show and sale from 1 to 5 p.m. over at St. Matthew's on July 24th for Clarissa Days. Uh, the quilts will be on display. They'll be for sale. All the proceeds then go to buy more material uh, to make these quilts that are then donated to various local charities and missions. Uh, the ladies are also in search of denim jean scraps. So if you have any old jeans lying around you'd like to get rid of, uh, please donate them to the church. Also, if you have flat, flat bed sheets, a uh, size king and queen as well. Uh, they use those for the backings of the quilts. Lutheran Island Camp has officially posted their summer schedule online. I do believe that horse camps are filled up, uh, but the, the regular camps are still open. So please sign up as soon as possible so you can secure your slot for the summer. Uh, also, if you need help paying for that, please let the churches know. There are some scholarships available. We'd love to help you uh, get your kids to camp. Uh, we are doing Bible study. We're doing a short four-session four video study looking at the lost books of the Bible, by books, of, uh, books that are considered counterfeits or that have been uh, meant to threaten the authenticity of the Scriptures. We, I've already looked at how the books of the Bible that we have in our uh, Bible came about, the, the canon that's set forth, the three rules that we follow. Um, so if you missed the first session, you can still participate. Each session is kind of self-isolated. Uh, it builds a little bit off of previous sessions, but there's enough there that you can get caught up. So if you missed the first one, don't worry. Uh, please come and join us. It'll be at 7 o'clock this coming Sunday on June 27th. And then we'll take a brief break on July 4th since it is a, a national holiday. And then we'll, we'll uh, come back together. Also, please be aware that the water at Emmanuel is uh, shut off periodically throughout the week uh, due to the work on our water mains. Uh, but we do have water on Sundays, so uh, do not worry about that. You can still come to church. We will have water. You can still use our restrooms on Sunday morning. And once again, I do apologize if there's any background noise from the, the equipment. There really is no safe place anymore to record during this time, uh, so we're trying to make our best of it. I keep bouncing back and forth between the church and the office, uh, but uh, so far the church has been quiet. Uh, today. So I pray that this recording uh, was, was okay. Dear friends, go in God's peace. We hope to see you back in God's house next Sunday.